Five days after Typhoon Haiyan ripped through the Philippines, survivors are struggling to pick up the pieces. It's considered one of the strongest typhoons ever in recorded history. Thousands are dead, hundreds of thousands of homes have been destroyed, millions have been affected. Well, this is what is left of Tacloban, one of the hardest hit areas. Entire communities have been wiped out and dead bodies remain buried under the debris. And there's dozens of other cities like this that are still without aid. In some places, help is finally starting to arrive, but the situation is dire. What I'm trying to do is to get things moving uh, so that we can get the stuff here. I've seen all of those uh, pictures. I've heard the complaints uh, from people. I absolutely agree with them. You can't have people who are here who are desperate, who can't get anything to eat and don't have water. It's absolutely basic. Well, many people around the world want to help. Here are some ways to do it and some things to avoid. First off, cash is best. Oftentimes, people want to help in any way they can, which is great, but it's not always helpful. Disaster struck areas like Haiti and Indonesia have seen boxes upon boxes of everything from teddy bears to shoes. But really, what most of the victims need is food, clean water, and medical care. Sending money to reputable agencies that can get these life-saving goods and services to the victims is the best way to help. And that brings us to the next tip, which is to support local efforts. When disaster strikes, time is of the essence. That's home the Philippines is around 2,500, but many more are expected to die of starvation, dehydration, and disease if they don't get the help they need. These people need help now. So resources should be directed to organizations that are on the ground to get aid directly to the victims. Organizations like the Philippine Red Cross, Community and Family Services International, and Citizens Disaster Response Center. Third, we can learn from past disasters, like Haiti, for example. Since the earthquake in 2010, over $10 billion in aid has been sent to the country. But years later, the country has little to show for it. Hundreds of thousands of Haitians still live in tents, and infrastructure is still in shambles. With some organizations that serve as the middleman, the money can't be traced due to lack of transparency and accountability. Similar problems plagued relief efforts in Indonesia after the tsunami, which resulted in delays and disorganization in bringing help to the victims. You'll see here, the victims don't have time. About uh, 25, 30 people. We're waiting for the other crew. We're waiting for supplies. Uh, at this moment, our team leader is uh, having discussion with the United Nations and the mayor where we can set up our field hospital. It's a little bit like the tsunami, we think, but uh, at this moment, we know there's practically nothing left. Uh, most of the things are destroyed. Uh, Lots of people homeless, without water, without food. So we also want to set up a water purification system uh, for you know, trying to relieve the most needed. So donate to organizations that have a clear plan for helping people on the ground right away. Some tips there to make sure your efforts have the biggest and best possible impact. Here in Washington, Liz Wall, RT.